It was the reign of Shah Jahan. On the banks of River Chenab lived a potter called Tulla. And he had another gorgeous, they're all gorgeous, right? <laughs> Daughter called Sohini. Izzat Beg, a trader from Bukhara, happened to come to this town and visit this potter's shop. And he was enraptured not just by the artistry of the pots created by Sohini and her father, but by Sohini herself. And uh, they fell in love. And Izzat Beg began to, you know, to find excuses to keep coming back to that shop, would keep buying more and more pottery, and apparently went bankrupt and had to <laughs> seek a job with Sohini's dad, all a clever plot to be close to Sohini. So he gave him the job of being his cattle herder, his buffalo grazer. That's how he got the name Mahival or Mehar. So Sohini and Mehar uh, were in love. But when her father discovered about this liaison, he immediately, secretly arranged for her marriage with another man called Dum. And the Bharat arrived and she was bundled off and taken away. Mehar became a fakir and began to live on the opposite side of the river. And Sohini was married to Dum. Now, but what gets interesting here is that Sohini is no Sati Savitri. So what does she do? At night, she takes a pitcher of clay and jumps into the Chenab River to go meet with her lover on the other side of the river. And every morning at the crack of dawn, she comes back. And this tryst with her lover continues until one day her nanad, her sister-in-law, spies Sohini doing this. And she cleverly replaces her pot of baked clay with a pot of unbaked clay. Kacha ghada. And that night when Sohini takes the plunge into the river to go meet with her truth, the ghada crumbles into the water and she sinks and she drowns. And Mehar discovers that and he jumps in with her. All these love legends are tragic. They all end. Uh, this way. So we kind of liked Sohini, you know, with all these, uh, I mean, it, needless to say, Umar Marui and a lot of these uh, love legends get appropriated in fairly predictable patriarchal ways because they are ideals of uh, womanly chastity in one sense. But Sohini here is bucking the trend in interesting ways. So uh, she says, those who get a glimpse abandon their homes, their husbands. Even without matkas in the whirlpool, they swirled. She jumps in. To choose safe waters is the path of imposters. Those who love take on the mighty river. You know, these poems erupt in a kind of audacious challenge to any sanitizing of the text and any flat reading of these love stories as only about spirituality and the divine and our meeting with God, which it is about. But I think what makes them so much more potent and charged is that they dance between uh, the earthly, the sensual, the here and now, the of this world and constantly play between these two planes of experience. And it, this, to me, I recall another poem by Ran, uh, Heer. In Punjabi, she says, Mai ni mein ranjha dhundan challi, mainu ranjha milya nahi. Oh, my mother, I went out in search of ranjha, but I could not find him. Rab milya, te ranjha nahi milya. Rab ranjhe varga nahi. I found God, but not my beloved. God's no match for my Ranja. <laughs> so the river has flowed for centuries between desire and fulfillment. What li lies on this side of the banks of the river is the status quo, is the establishment, is, are the structures of containment. And the plunge 
is transgression. And I think Sohini's failure perhaps lay in her return at dawn to keep up the pretense. And in a sense, in Sohini's failure lies all our failure as we struggle to move between this bank and the other, between Had and Anhad. Now in this Beth and Bai that they will present before you, Sohini says, take care of your own affairs. No one stop me. I threw myself in. At midnight, I leapt. No one stopped me. In this dark night, my soul whirls in these waters. No one stopped me. Abdul Latif says, she'll make it to the high ground. Come in. 